You don't learn to play jazz guitar in 20 minutes. It's a process and a set of skills that you build over time through practice. That's why you want to get used to doing things the right way, build the habits that help you progress faster so that you're not wasting your time. In this video, I want to discuss some of those habits that can really help you level up your playing a lot faster because some of those are not that obvious, but they're all incredibly effective. When I was still studying mathematics at the University in Aarhus, there was a summer where I decided that now I really needed to start practicing every day. Something that my teachers had been telling me forever, but I just never listened to them. And I still remember going to practice with my band for the first time after practicing daily for a few weeks. The instrument had just opened up for me and I could play all these new things. I had choices that I'd never been able to play before, which felt amazing. And to be honest, I never felt like that again, but I immediately learned the lesson of consistent practice and what it could do, which is maybe one of the most important things that I've ever learned when it comes to guitar. But it's more than just playing every day. If you want to improve something, you need to work at it until it really gets in there. And that often takes fairly long, like weeks more than days or hours. The main thing to keep in mind with this is that you want to keep working on the same exercises for some time and track how you're progressing. Here you keep playing the exercises to get better and you track your progress to stay motivated and of course also just to make sure that you're actually progressing. What you want to avoid is that you just scratch the surface and practice something new every day without really digging deep and really getting better that's a lot less efficient. This has often been a part of how I worked when I really improved something in my playing, especially in terms of technique and speed, but also with other things like improvising over difficult chord changes. It's useful to often remind yourself that nothing will suddenly be something that you can just do. It always takes practice, but you will see that return later in the video as well. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. This is often put forward as an Albert Einstein quote, but if you Google it, then it probably isn't. And while jazz guitar may qualify as some type of mental illness, then what this really teaches us is something else. You need to check if what you practice also actually helps you get better at the skills that you want to improve. If you're following the advice of practicing consistently, then you also need to look at what you practice and compare that to what is improving in your playing and also look at what you want to get better at so that you can change or come up with exercises that focus on improving that skill. You can do this by having a list of goals that you want to reach or skills that you want to improve. And that's anyway a good exercise because the more specific you can be about what you want to learn, the easier it's going to be to learn it. It is amazing how much time is wasted just fumbling around in the dark. You won't learn to improvise over a jazz blues by practicing scales or get better at comping by working on inversions. This is very important so that you don't spend hours or days practicing something that actually is not helping you get better at the things that you want to improve. And one of the main things to have in there is the next habit. I say this very often in my videos and it's something that I have to remind students and actually also myself of all the time. Work on using the things that you practice if you want them as a part of your playing. And this goes for diatonic arpeggios, sweep picking, drop two voicings, and pretty much anything else. If you don't have a strategy for getting it into your playing, you're probably wasting your time practicing it. Building this habit often means that you have to find a way to go from a basic technical exercise into something that you can use while you're playing. And often the missing link here is to use some form of composition to explore how you can connect new material with all the other things that you already have in your playing. You want to keep this in mind when you're planning your practice routines and evaluating how you practice so that you know that you're getting the most out of all the exercises that you do and that you're not wasting your time. It's also something that you want to think about when you're coming up with or planning exercises because if you practice something that you have no idea how to use, then you should really think about whether you should be practicing that at all. Now, I guess I'm old fashioned with this, but I'm pretty sure that the most efficient way to learn is actually to take lessons with a good teacher. And you can always disagree with me in the comments. Hi. Uh, how about something like this? Nah, that's, yeah, that's not really it. Or maybe I can do it uh, like this. No, no, that, that sucks. Or something completely different, like this one. Yeah, that sucks, actually. 
See you next week. The important thing to realize is that if you're learning something new, then you have to rely on your own ear to figure out if it's good enough or if something's wrong, then what exactly do you need to fix? And sometimes I think we forget that you need a trained ear to recognize a lot of things, especially more subtle things like phrasing or swing feel, or even just how melodies log in with the changes. And that's the biggest part of why you take lessons, to get access to an experienced listener that will tell you what to work on, but also how to work on it. This is also why I use the community in my online course to give feedback on how the students are doing, which even helps with things that I don't really talk about in the course because I anyway hear and see them play. If you don't have access to a teacher in some form, then you can also find people to practice with or even use the internet like a forum or a Facebook group, like my Jazz Guitar Insiders group. Posting a video and then telling us what you're working on can give you a ton of useful feedback. Of course, with posting videos on the internet, you do want to be aware of the amount of nonsense you can also get. So it pays to know who's commenting so that you also know who to listen to and who to ignore. Jazz is not a solo art form. It was invented in bands and it's about making music together and communicating with each other while improvising. But there are much more important reasons why it's very useful to make music with other people when you're learning. For me, this was always just the most fun part of playing jazz, making music with others. And I think that's also clear from the fact that I learned a huge chunk of my repertoire and really built the foundation of my playing, jamming with a bass player in the streets of Copenhagen before I started studying at the conservatory in The Hague. What I see as the most important benefits is that you're forced to play and make things work so that the song just doesn't fall apart. You have to take everything to where you can actually use it because otherwise, it's not gonna be there when you're playing with people. And it's also just a lot more fun and you stay motivated to learn new things and keep practicing. And these three things are much more important than you might think when it comes to learning. So if you're not already playing with other people and you want to get better at jazz, then seek out those opportunities and find people to play with. Just play some songs and both learn and enjoy that experience. It is important to figure out what to practice and make sure that you're focusing on the right skills to improve so that you're not leaving something behind that turns out to be essential in the long run. To get that right, then check out this video where I discuss the different skills that you need and how you should work on them to improve your playing.